Hello, this is me. I'm Paul Beckwith. I've taught uh, many courses in climatology, meteorology, oceanography, um, environmental issues at the University of Ottawa in the Department of Geography. And uh, the last course I taught was actually at uh, the Department of Geography and Environmental Studies over at Carleton University, first year physical geography. So I'm going to give you an overview of the latest, of, as of today, of what's happening with rapid climate change and the impacts from the global to the local level. Local could be anywhere. You know, it could be dealing with any project anywhere. How, how, do, you, how do you incorporate the rapidly changing climate and the, basically the new environment that we have when you want to analyze the economics or feasibility or how durable, durability, um, construction materials, uh, whether it, you know, for any project, whether it be, you know, putting in a new building, putting in a campsite, putting in a skiing resort, anything that humans like to do or, or, or need, you know, new structures, providing power to it, whatever, any project, anywhere. So. Things are different, okay? So let me talk about how, how they're different. So let's say there's an environmental impact, impact study that's being done, and uh, you know you look at it and you're supposed to critique it for a given project. Well, what you'll find out is that it won't incorporate the rapid changes that are occurring now on the planet. So what I would do is I would give an outline of the evidence at these hearings, anywhere hearings, anytime, um, for any project. And so I'd look at the climate change that's happening globally, continentally, and then regionally in this Pacific region. Um, try to come up with a forecast of what's going to happen there in the future and how that will impact what we do in our design process you know, events globally and in Canada or any other country that show that climate change is here. Um, I'm, I'll talk about that. Investigation of abrupt climate change. Abrupt, changing very, very fast. Non-linear. Okay, so it's not like a straight line. Things are ramping up very quickly. I'll talk about the latest science on global greenhouse gas concentrations global average temperatures, Arctic climate, jet stream behavior, methane emissions perma from permafrost and seafloor sediments, northern hemisphere versus southern hemisphere difference and implications for anywhere. Nonlinear changes. Um, so this project, you know, it may be a distributed project, may have stations, substations, connections spread throughout a large region that could be affected by climate change, including extreme weather events. So, you know, how do we apply all of these to this project, to the looking at the project environmental impact study or environmental assessment? And, you know, we have to look at, we have to have an understanding of how climate change is going to play out in order to do this assessment properly. I would argue this is not being done properly just about anywhere in the world, just about everywhere in the world anywhere and everywhere. <laughs> okay, so this is a particular example of a project. So it's the idea of building a new set of transmission lines from city of Winnipeg in um, Manitoba down into Minnesota. So that, you know, Manitoba is mostly generating power from hydro. There's excess electricity. If they're burning, if they're creating their electricity from coal burning power plants, you know, in the state south then if we can if manitoba can sell them this power to displace the coal power then this is uh you know a net a net gain but then you know what about building the line itself so i'll discuss some of these things okay so the first thing that is crucial to recognize is that the climate is changing rapidly so all weather occurs within that climate so the statistics of weather is changing. So I'm going to bring you back to your basic math class. You know, sorry, you know, 
Like it's not gonna be too painful. This is not a trip to the dentist. This is an educational uh, learning experience uh, journey which I'm taking you on. So, you know, it's not gonna be too painful, but remember, you know, when you were in a class and, and uh, you know, you'd, you'd always be talking to other students about, well, I hope they bell the, bell the mark, you know, you soon realize that you don't have to do wonderful on a particular test, you just have to do better than the other people in the class. Like if you do better than, than half the people in the class and you're over on this curve, so, so over on this side of the curve. So this is the bell curve. This is the typical bell curve or the normal distribution, if you like. Um, so we have counts, a number of people here. So if this was um, percentage, if this was marks here, you know, um, ideally for the, the person giving the, te well, it depends. Let, let's say they want the average to be 70% in the class. So this would be 70%. This is the mu, this is the, the mean or the average. It's where most of the people get in that, the, the, this number of students getting this would be pretty high. And then as you get to much lower marks, it starts dropping off. As you get to much higher marks, it starts increasing. Um, if you want to know the number of students that, so we have these sigma values and uh, within one sigma, you get what, about 66% of the students would be, would be get, would, in the class would get marks in between here. If you had a big enough class, a, a decent sample size. Uh, if you go to the two sigma line, 95.45% of the students would have marks in that range. And then you have, uh, you know, then you have yourself that is way up here, for example. Um, you're between two sigma and three sigma, and that would be four in a hundred people. Um, and then the three sigma people is, are, the, are all the keeners, uh, you know, the three and um, three and a thousand sort of people. So, you know, in a class of a hundred, it might be, you know, it's a third of a person. So three classes, maybe one of them is in that region. And then you have other people here, unfortunately, at the bottom. There's always going to be this type of distribution when you measure something. Whether you measure marks in your classroom, whether you measure uh, weather parameters, for example, the temperature, or the wind speed, or the rainfall, or the humidity. If you measure any of these parameters, you're going to get a distribution of values. And... Um, there'll be some things that will vary with the curve, for example. You know, if, if the temperature is in very narrow range, then this curve will be very steep. You know, you go away from this narrow range and it goes very, it drops off very quickly. Um, you can also get a skewing of the curve, for example. So it's not nice and symmetric. Say you have a really good uh, batch of students you know, most of them are going to have higher marks and the ones with low marks are going to be very few in between. So this curve will, will be skewed and it'll lean over this way. It won't be perfectly symmetric. The other thing that's important is if you want the total number of people in a given box, um, in a given area, then you have to add up all of the, all of the people individually. So it's the area under the curve is gonna be the number of events, say, between two sigma and three sigma. So the key thing is that human emissions have changed the chemistry of the atmosphere and oceans. Okay, this is, uh, this is not questionable, it's happened. You can just measure it. This has led to rapid changes in climate with faster warming at higher latitudes. So the weather statistics has changed, so this curve that we used to have that described a stable climate is no longer um, describing our present climate. We're getting more extreme weather events, for example, torrential rains leading to droughts, wind storms, torrential rains leading to droughts, yes, torrential rains leading to floods, wind storms, droughts, etc. They're happening more often, okay? They're more frequent. So one in a hundred year event in the previous statistics might be a one in 10 year event or you know, one in a few year event. They're more severe, okay? These storms are more intense. There's more energy in the atmosphere. Big part of that is a higher temperature, more evaporation from water bodies, more uh, water vapor in the air. That water vapor rises, releases the latent heat 
And uh, when it condenses into droplets, that heat that was required to evaporate the water in the first place is released in the atmosphere and it leads to more severe storms. These storms are lasting longer. They're, they're, they're lasting longer over a particular region because they're, being, they're moving slower, for example. They're, more, um, they're larger in size. Um, so it might rain longer in a region because that storm cloud sits over you and doesn't get dragged along by the jet streams any longer or it moves much slower. And they're happening in new places. Okay, the jet streams are wavier, they're bringing the storms up to higher latitudes, up to lower latitudes, they're making unusual things happening. For example, 30 centimeters of snow, about a foot of snow in the Atacama Desert, uh, where, where, you know, it, hard, it, it may rain once every 10 years or something. Okay, um, so these things are happening in new places. So, if this is where the current climate is, or the stable climate, the one that we're all used to, then what happens is, as there's an increase in the average temperature, remember the peak is the mean or the average, the whole curve will shift over. Now in the old climate, the area under this curve would, the big blue area would be the cold weather events in the current or previous climate the old climate, and look at the area in blue under the new curve. It's much, much smaller. There's much fewer cold weather events. Whereas over here, um, before we had this area is the number of hot events, and now it's expanded to this. This is much, much greater. This isn't just a doubling or a small increase. This is an enormous ramping up of hot weather events. And, and over here, the red area, there's hardly anything under the curve before, and now there's a massive number. So we're, we're getting a lot more extreme weather events, hot events. Okay, so here is some actual data. I think this is from one of James Hansen's papers. So it's dividing up. It's showing we got a 1951 to 1980 here. So that's, a, a, that's over about 30 years. And then we jump up, we've got 10 years here in the 80s to 91, and then in the 90s, 10 years, and in the 2000 to 2011. And what you can see is this was the original curve. This is summer temperature anomalies. Anomalies are temperatures, how much it's higher than it used to be. And what you can see here is you can see, so the hot areas are the red, the cold areas are the blue, and then this is the original trace of the curve. The green line is the mean of this curve. And what we can see is a shifting. There's the area of red is getting larger, even larger, even larger. So there's, there's no, so you'll notice the red is getting huge. The blue is less. So there, in the summer, there's a lot of hot events. This area, and there's a lot of extremely hot events. This is uh, three sigma that I showed before. 4 sigma, 5 sigma, very, very rare events before, and now they have a significant area, okay? So the statistics is completely changing. And this is a good color map. Just, it looks a bit complicated, but basically red and brown are getting hotter and hotter. Two standard deviations to three. Used to be very rare events, and what you can see is this is 1955, not much red. Okay, 65, 75, there's a little bit more. And as you go down here, this is the 2000s, 2003 to 2011, and you can see lots of brown, lots of red. Now the amount in the bins is measured above here. So for example, in 2010, 13% of the space on the earth is in this three sigma and higher. 18% is in the red area, 34% is in the yellow area, um, and then in the neutral area is white, and the colder events are here. So what you can see is, you can see that there's been a tremendous ramping up of extreme weather events around the world. And I think that's the key point I want to make in this video. The statistics of weather has changed, so we have to reassess, we have to do things differently. Thank you.